the investigation and treatment of couples with recurrent first trimester and second trimester miscarriage. Green Top Guideline Number 17, April 2011. Background and Introduction Miscarriage is defined as the spontaneous loss of pregnancy before the fetus reaches viability. The term therefore includes all pregnancy losses from the time of conception until 24 weeks of gestation. Recurrent miscarriage, defined as the loss of three or more consecutive pregnancies, affects 1% of couples trying to conceive. It has been estimated that 1-2% of second trimester pregnancies miscarry before 24 weeks of gestation. Risk Factors for Recurrent Miscarriage What are the causes of recurrent first trimester miscarriage and second trimester miscarriage? Epidemiological Factors Maternal age and number of previous miscarriages are two independent risk factors for a further miscarriage. Advancing maternal age is associated with a decline in both the number and quality of the remaining oocytes. A large prospective register linkage study reported the age-related risk of miscarriage in recognized pregnancies to be 12 to 19 years, 13%, 20 to 24 years, 11%, 25 to 29 years, 12%, 30 to 34 years, 15%, 35 to 39 years, 25%, 40 to 44 years, 51%, and greater than or equal to 45 years, 93%. Advanced paternal age has also been identified as a risk factor for miscarriage. The risk of miscarriage is highest among couples where the woman is greater than or equal to 35 years of age and the man is equal or greater than to 40 years of age. Previous reproductive history is an independent predictor of future pregnancy outcome. The risk of a further miscarriage increases after each successive pregnancy loss, reaching approximately 40% after three consecutive pregnancy losses and the prognosis worsens with increasing maternal age. A previous live birth does not preclude a woman developing recurrent miscarriage. Maternal cigarette smoking and caffeine consumption have been associated with an increased risk of a spontaneous miscarriage in a dose-dependent manner. However, current evidence is insufficient to confirm this association. Heavy alcohol consumption is toxic to the embryo and the fetus. Even moderate consumption of 5 or more units per week may increase the risk of a sporadic miscarriage. Working with or using video display terminals does not increase the risk of miscarriage. The evidence on the effect of anesthetic gases for theater workers is conflicting. Antiphospholipid syndrome Antiphospholipid syndrome is the most important treatable cause of recurrent miscarriage. Antiphospholipid syndrome refers to the association between antiphospholipid antibodies, lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin antibodies, and anti-B2 glycoprotein 1 antibodies and adverse pregnancy outcome or vascular thrombosis. Adverse pregnancy outcomes include three or more consecutive miscarriages before 10 weeks of gestation, one or more morphologically normal fetal losses after the 10th week of gestation, one or more preterm births before the 34th week of gestation owing to placental disease. The mechanism by which antiphospholipid antibodies cause pregnancy morbidity include inhibition of trophoblastic function and differentiation, activation of complement pathways at the maternal-fetal interface resulting in a local inflammatory response, and in later pregnancy, thrombosis of the uteroplacental vasculature. In vitro studies have shown that the effect of antiphospholipid antibodies on trophoblast function and complement activation 
is reversed by heparin. Antiphospholipid antibodies are present in 15% of women with recurrent miscarriage. By comparison, the prevalence of antiphospholipid antibodies in women with a low risk obstetric history is less than 2%. In women with recurrent miscarriage associated with antiphospholipid antibodies, the live birth rate in pregnancies with no pharmacological intervention has been reported to be as low as 10%. Genetic Factors Parental Chromosomal Rearrangements In approximately 2-5% of couples with recurrent miscarriage, one of the partners carries a balanced structural chromosomal anomaly, most commonly a balanced reciprocal or Robertsonian translocation. Although carriers of a balanced translocation are usually phenotypically normal, their pregnancies are at increased risk of miscarriage and may result in a live birth with multiple congenital malformation and or mental disability secondary to an unbalanced chromosomal arrangement. The risk of miscarriage is influenced by the size and the genetic contents of the rearranged chromosomal segments. In couples with recurrent miscarriage, chromosomal abnormalities of the embryo account for 30 to 57% of further miscarriages. The risk of miscarriage resulting from chromosomal abnormalities of the embryo increases with advancing maternal age. As the number of miscarriages increases, the risk of euploid pregnancy loss increases. Anatomical factors Congenital uterine malformations The exact contribution that congenital uterine anomalies make the recurrent miscarriage remains unclear since the prevalence and reproductive implications of uterine anomalies in the general population are unknown. The reported prevalence of uterine anomalies in recurrent miscarriage population ranges between 1.8% and 37.6%. The prevalence of uterine malformations appears to be higher in women with second trimester miscarriages compared with women who suffer first trimester miscarriages, but this may be related to the cervical weakness that is frequently associated with uterine malformation. It has been reported that women with arcuate uteri tend to miscarry more in the second trimester while women with septate uteri are more likely to miscarry in the first trimester. A retrospective review of reproductive performance in women with untreated uterine anomalies has suggested that these women experience high rates of miscarriage and preterm delivery with a term delivery rate of only 50%. Cervical weakness Cervical weakness is a recognized cause of second trimester miscarriage, but the true incidence is unknown since the diagnosis is essentially a clinical one. There is currently no satisfactory objective test that can identify women with cervical weakness in the non-pregnant state. The diagnosis is usually based on a history of a second trimester miscarriage preceded by a spontaneous rupture of membranes or painless cervical dilatation. Endocrine factors Systemic maternal endocrine disorders such as diabetes mellitus and thyroid disease have been associated with miscarriage. Women with diabetes who have high hemoglobin A1c levels in the first trimester are at risk of miscarriage and fetal malformation. However, well-controlled diabetes mellitus is not a risk factor for recurrent miscarriage, nor is treated thyroid dysfunction. The prevalence of diabetes mellitus and thyroid dysfunction in women who suffer recurrent miscarriage is similar to that reported in the general population. Antithyroid antibodies have been linked to recurrent miscarriage. The presence of thyroid antibodies in euthyroid women with a history of recurrent miscarriage, does not affect future pregnancy outcome. Polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS, has been linked to an increased risk of miscarriage, 
but the exact mechanism remains unclear. Polycystic ovarian morphology, elevated serum luteinizing hormone levels, or elevated serum testosterone levels, although markers of polycystic ovary syndrome do not predict an increased risk of future pregnancy loss among ovulatory women with a history of recurrent miscarriage who conceive spontaneously. The increased risk of miscarriage in women with polycystic ovary syndrome has been recently attributed to insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, and hyperandrogenemia. The prevalence of insulin resistance is increased in women with recurrent miscarriage compared with much fertile controls. An elevated free androgen index appears to be a prognostic factor for a subsequent miscarriage in women with recurrent miscarriage. Immune factors There is no clear evidence to support the hypothesis of human leukocyte antigen incompatibility between couples, the absence of maternal leukocytotoxic antibodies, or the absence of maternal blocking antibodies. Hence, they should not be offered routinely in the investigation of couples with recurrent miscarriage. Infective agents Any severe infection that leads to bacteremia or viremia can cause a sporadic miscarriage. The role of infection in recurrent miscarriage is unclear. For an infective agent to be implicated in the etiology of repeated pregnancy loss, it must be capable of persisting in the genital tract and avoiding detection or must cause insufficient symptoms to disturb the woman. Toxoplasmosis, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes, and listeria infections do not fulfill this criteria and routine torch screening should be abandoned. The presence of bacterial vaginosis in the first trimester of pregnancy has been reported as a risk factor for second trimester miscarriage and preterm delivery, but the evidence for an association with first trimester miscarriage is inconsistent. Treatment of bacterial vaginosis early in the second trimester with oral clindamycin significantly reduces the incidence of second trimester miscarriage and preterm birth in the general population. There are no published data to assess the role of antibiotic therapy in women with a previous second trimester miscarriage. Inherited thrombophilic defects Both inherited and acquired thrombophilias, including activated protein C resistance, most commonly due to factor V laden mutation, deficiencies of protein CS and antithrombin 3 hyperhomocysteinemia, and prothrombin gene mutation are established causes of systemic thrombosis. In addition, inherited thrombophilias have been implicated as a possible cause in recurrent miscarriage in late pregnancy complications with the presumed mechanism being thrombosis of the utero-placental circulation. The magnitude of the association between inherited thrombophilias and fetal loss varies according to type of fetal loss and type of thrombophilia. The association between thrombophilia and late pregnancy loss has been consistently stronger than for early pregnancy loss. Carriers of factor V laden or prothrombin gene mutation have doubled the risk of experiencing recurrent miscarriage compared with women without these thrombophilic mutations. What are the recommended investigations of couples with recurrent first trimester miscarriage and second trimester miscarriage? Women with recurrent first trimester and second trimester miscarriage should be looked after by a health professional with the necessary skills and expertise. Where available, this might be within a recurrent miscarriage clinic. Ideally, the couple should be seen together at a dedicated recurrent miscarriage clinic and given accurate information to facilitate decision-making about future pregnancies. Clearly written patient leaflets are recommended to provide written information that the couple can take home.